Hello, everybody, and welcome to Pandas Indexing and Selecting, part of your opinionated guide to pandas. Uh, again, we're going to be uh, following the similar structure as the opinionated guide was before. Uh, so you're going to be hearing about the functions that I use, and you're going to be hearing very little about the functions that I don't use. Uh, there are plenty of ways to go ahead and do things in uh, pandas. Uh, and one of the initial goals of, of Python itself was that it was a language that, where there was only one right way to do things. Unfortunately or fortunately, that's just not the way it works. Uh, in pandas as well, there's a bajillion right ways to go about and do things. Um, so, which are the ways that are you gonna, or which are the ways that, uh, uh, which of the ways do you want to use? Um, and that was a question that I had myself, and, and for the most part, I couldn't find any resources out there. If you go on Stack Overflow, you'll find uh, different ways to go ahead and do things, and you'll sort of figure out their pros and cons. Um, but I always, <laughs> one part of me always wanted just someone to just tell me like. Nate, you just need to do this, and this will get you 90% of the way there. And so hopefully this tutorial will allow you to figure out what your 90% of the way is as well. So again, this is not the definitive guide to uh, pandas, this is the opinionated guide to pandas. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, if you are joining us for the first time, the previous lecture, uh, we went over an introduction to data structures or data structures in pandas. So that's basically series and data frames. You can sort of check out the link up here. If you know pandas, if you sort of understand it already, if you've used it for a couple of months, I don't think there's really any need to do that tutorial. Um, but if you're interested in sort of hearing me prattle on about specific things, it's there. And it's, it's really useful if you don't really know pandas well. Um, that being said, if you do know pandas, this is the best place to start. Uh, we're going to be going over some really intricate details of a couple of things. Uh, first, we're going to be reviewing the basics of indexing and selecting. We're going to be talking about multi-index. We're going to be talking about getting single values. And we're going to be pointing out some stuff you don't need to worry about, which is always very nice. Um, if you want, you can check out the full documentation either here or here. Um, it's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in there that you probably won't ever use. But that being said, if you have a question about it, you can always refer there. It's actually really good documentation. It's just, it's a lot. Um, so hopefully this won't be as much. So with no further ado, let's get to it. So in order to review the basics of selecting data out of a data frame, we're going to be using the tips data set. So we've got total bill, we've got tip, we've got sex, we've got smoker, we've got a lot of columns in this data set. It's something where we might want to get some data out of, right? So first way to get data. We get data with columns. Um, you can go ahead and select multiple columns by passing in a list into the square bracket notation of your data frame. Pretty dang simple. Uh, if you pass in a single one, what does it do? Do, 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 do. It gives you a series. So hopefully you guys knew that. Uh, this is the most common way of getting data out of data frames. Um, I use this basically all the time. Um, another way to go ahead and get out of it is uh, selecting some rows. Um, now in pandas, generally speaking, if you're doing row-wise operations, you're probably doing something you shouldn't. Um, it's always one of those things, that little alarm that goes off in the back of your head. Like if you're operating over rows, then uh, probably shouldn't be using pandas for it. But sometimes you should be. Um, so just keep it as a warning. It's not sort of an absolutely don't do. Um, you can get rows using this operation, which is square brackets plus uh, uh, the sort of number of the rows that you're looking at. Uh, the problem here is it always confuses me either as whether this is the actual index or whether I can actually pass in numbers here to represent the rows. I, I don't use this particularly too much and I almost hesitate teaching it to you, but I, I need to show it to you regardless. So if there was one that I would just sort of put out of your mind, just forget you ever knew this one. And instead, use something like either lock or ilock. Lock and ilock are pretty similar or pretty simple uh, and similar. So sim simpler. Um, so they're, they're pretty similar. Um, they're basically for selecting both rows and columns at the same time. The difference is that lock uses their proper name. So in this case, the proper name of these columns, so sex and smoker, and the proper names of these uh, indices. So we know it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is actually going to be the same as ilock. Um, whereas lock uses their uh, uh, numerical position. So in this case, it, it asks like, hey, give me row 1 through 3, and give me column 0 through 2. We can sort of see the examples here. Um, the final way to get data out of this, and the probably the most common, uh, maybe only after uh, number or, or way number one, is using Boolean indices. Um, so as we talked about a little bit before, on series, 
we can go ahead and we can perform specific broadcasting operations. And one of the most common ones that we perform is a Boolean broadcasting operation. So we can take this row tip and we can select all the times where the tip is greater than $1. And we'll either give us true or, or false every once in a while. So a false. So this person was a very poor tipper. Um, or maybe just didn't buy much, but probably a very poor tipper. Um, and we can pass that information into our tips. So let's say we want to go ahead and exclude all tips that were less than $1. This would be basically doing that. So select all tips that were greater than $1 and only select those rows from our data frame. So now we notice all the tips are at least $1. So the first one is $1.01. .01. Um, and we can increase this. So for example, maybe we want this to be $3. Uh, now we only see tips that are greater than $3. We can see some of these rows have been excluded. Okay, that's the basics. Hopefully you knew those. If you didn't know them, practice more. Now let's talk about the advanced stuff. The advanced stuff, it's pretty advanced. Multi-index. Um, Multi-index is something that you will run into in Pandas. Um, it's something that when I first ran into it, I just was very confused at what was going on. Um, the place where you will run into it is actually in group buys. Um, I'm not going to be sort of explaining group buys in their full here. Uh, there's, in fact, another lesson which is going to be specifically on group buys. Um, so just bear with me for the moment. But you will find them once you do a group buy. So let's say we want to go ahead and find what the mean tip was for uh, the for sex and smoker combinations. So in this case, we go ahead and we group by sex and smoker, and we take the aggregate, blah, 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 blah. We get something that looks like this. So we see the mean tip for males and those that smoke, mean tip for males and those that don't smoke, mean tips for females that smoke, and then mean tip for females that go ahead and don't smoke. OK, pretty cool. But what is this? Why do I get it's so one? It's this kind of really weird selection type thing that happens here. I, I honestly don't know why that's true. But also, it seems like we have two indices. What's going on? Um, this is what's called a multi-index. And if you actually check out what the index looks like, um, you'll see it's it's an object called a multi-index. It, it becomes really quite complex. Uh, you've got levels, uh, male, female, um, yes, no. You've got different codes. You've got names. Um, and while there are specific operations to go ahead and get into this multi-index, so for example, you can pass a tuple, and we'll actually get you back what you want. It's a lot to learn. Um, and can you slice with this tuple? What happens when I use iLock? Do I need to go ahead and like use numbers in this case? Um, it's very, very confusing. Um, and to be frank, it's something that I've never learned. And you might be wondering, Nate, well, how, how did you get by without learning it? It's because of this special command I'm about to show you. It's a secret. It's not a secret. Most people know about it, but uh, it's called reset index. So we can take our multi-index tips. We can call reset index, and let's see what it gives us. It takes those indices, which is sex and smoker, and it turns them into columns. So in this case, we get uh, sex, male, male, smoker, yes, no, yes, no. And with columns, we know exactly how to deal with it. So if you want to find where the, uh, the tips are smokers, uh, are no, and the sex is male, we can simply do the operations we're very, very like familiar with. So re tips, let's find the column sex, let's set where it's equal to male. Let's find the column smoker, let's set where it's equal to true. And let's take the and of both of these. So that's the and of two Boolean columns. Remember, you need to use this and and not this and. If you use this and, you'll get a, um, uh, an error. Um, so you need to make sure to use this one. And we'll go ahead and we'll give you the exact same result as above. So the exact same. Now, you might be saying, well, Nate, this is actually a lot more to write uh, than something like this. And you're absolutely right. And you, it's totally fine if you want to go ahead and learn the multi-index uh, syntax. That being said, for me, um, I found it just as easy to go ahead and use this syntax. And because I'm super familiar with this type of, uh, of indexing into data frames, uh, it means that I don't need to learn a whole new syntax and all the caveats that go with it as well. Um, so you don't have to do this, but I would highly suggest it. Um, if you're using reset index, uh, one of the things that you can also do is you can go ahead and reset index to just a particular level. Uh, so let me just show you this, what this looks like right up here. So we reset index to a particular level. We can go ahead and take that sex and we can turn it just into a column and we can keep smoker as an index. Um, so in this case, we can go ahead and find where lock equals yes. So we can find where everyone is basically a smoker. So it's kind of cool. Um, I use this every now and again, uh, especially when it comes to joining things. Uh, but that is for another lesson. And finally, you can always uh, turn things back into multi-index by doing set index. 
Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, it goes ahead and it sets the index. Uh, you can also append to the index by passing append equals true. Um, I have done these before. The only time that I have done these is when using pd.merge, um, which we'll be learning about in the joining and combining data frames a, a little bit later on. So that's all there is to multi-index. I, I hate to say, but uh, if you get yourself into a situation where you've got multi-index, my advice to you is reset the index. And then you are not in that situation and you are happy again. Um, now that is not the best advice for everyone. Some people really like using it. And maybe if your job sort of hinges around multi-index and, and it makes things a lot faster and more computationally efficient, and I, I have to agree, it will make things more efficient. Um, maybe that's what you should do. But for me, uh, this is what works. Okay, next thing, getting single values. Getting single values. Uh, getting single values out from a data frame is actually really quite simple. You already know how to get a single value out from a data frame. Um, there's only one thing you need to know about it, and that is there is a faster way to do it. The next is getting single values. Uh, notice I magically ran some of the cells below because they take a little bit of time. Um, so getting uh, single values, setting single values, uh, there's only one thing you need to know about it, um, and that is there's one way to do it fast and one way to do it slow. Uh, in fact, you already know how to do it. Um, using lock, you can go ahead and get single values. You simply pass the index that you want and then the name of the, of the column that you want, and it will get a single value. You can even set single values this way. Um, uh, the problem with this is it's very slow. Um, so notice uh, another operation called at. At is pretty simple. Uh, all at does is it goes ahead and it does lock, but only for one single value. So lock, remember, we could go ahead and we could get uh, one, 0 through 1 or 0 through 20. Um, so we could, it's a little bit more versatile. But if you're going to be going ahead and setting single values lots of times, at becomes much more computationally efficient. So notice in this case, uh, it takes about 6.79 microseconds. For tips, it takes 362. So a 100x, well, not 100x, but a 50x speed up uh, in terms of going from lock to at. Um, with at, it's again, it's pretty simple. It's the exact same syntax as, as lock, or it's the exact same syntax as iLock if you want to use iAt. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty simple. Uh, the only thing that you need to sort of recognize here is that um, at and, 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 and iAt, yat, yat, um, they're only useful when dealing with single entries. Uh, so I have used these things before when making some modifications on lots of, of entries in a data frame um, in a non-columnar way. So it's been okay. Um, that being said, if you can avoid it, please do. Um, it's always just better to not make these types of single uh, item adjustments anyways or get better data to begin with. Um, so that's all there is for getting single values, uh, getting and setting single values. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, and that's most of what's going to be covered here. Um, I do want to tell you about a couple of other things that uh, Pandas does expose. Uh, where, masks, and queries. Um, so these are things that are built into Pandas. I've never used them personally before. I've seen other people use them, and they do seem quite happy with them. Uh, that being said, uh, the tools we have now will basically replicate all the behavior you would get from where, masks, and queries. Uh, that being said, some things at very, very high uh, scale uh, are a little bit faster. So for example, queries are faster if you're dealing with millions and millions of rows. Um, but let me just go ahead and do one thing. Uh, let me show you how to duplicate where in terms of a uh, syntax that we already know. So um, we've got this sort of data frame. It's got some negative numbers. It's got some positive numbers. Where goes ahead and it returns all the places that are positive and it sort of fills them with, and so in this case, it, all the places that satisfy your query, and all the places that don't satisfy your query, it goes ahead and assigns a NAND there, right? Uh, kind of cool. Um, we can easily do that as well. Um, let's go ahead and let's take our data frame. Let's select all values that are less than our query, so the opposite of, of what our query was, and let's set them equal to NAND. What do we get? The exact same thing. Um, so. You can learn about masks. I'm not even going to tell you what it does, and I'm not even going to tell you what query does. All I'm going to say is that the tools you have right now are basically duplicates of, or are basically you can do anything you could want to do with where masks and queries with the tools you have right now. Um, and if you want to learn about them, 
you can do it. The docs are here. They're right here. I'm not stopping you. You can go do it. Um, that being said, I do think it will clear up some room in your mental uh, mental cavity uh, to go ahead and not have to remember these. So hopefully that that frees up a little bit of, uh, of mental room for you as well. And that's it. Um, so hopefully you know a little bit more about selecting. You know a little bit more about uh, indexing. Um, I don't know any particular tor tutorial that goes ahead and does this. The getting and knowing tutorial um, uh, that I will be going over, and I'll go ahead and link it right up here, uh, is pretty good for that sort of stuff. Uh, so go ahead and join me there, or, or go ahead and check it out yourself. Uh, and we'll go through uh, getting and, and knowing, and we'll select some stuff, and we'll like set some stuff, and it'll be really fun. And we'll, we'll be doing this all blind, because it's basically me doing the uh, pandas exercises without ever having seen them before. So you can see how a real data scientist works and get to scoff and be like, huh, I'd do that in such a better way, which is good. So good for you. Um, just you know, say it in a polite way, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this, and I hope you have not been put off by so much banter. Um, uh, if you have enjoyed this, please do join me for my next uh, uh, guide in the Opinionated Guide to Pandas. Um, and I'll see you guys next time.